Hi. Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. Hey, kind of a different look here. You're in my office with a green screen today, and uh, my backyard is being tore up. We'll be back to it next week. But um, anyway, can't really get out there. And also, at this point, it is kind of on the dark side out there right now. Since I am going to uh, be doing this on Friday night, I've got to work down out of town tomorrow being Saturday. So I'm going to put this up this evening, but the word we're looking at today is hopeful. Hope. Hope in the Christian's life. The Christian has hope, and the only hope that anybody truly has, the only true hope that any of us have, is in Jesus. In Hebrews 11, chapter, verse number 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. We can't see it, but we believe it, and we believe what God has said, and we have this hope. You remember the story of Job? Job, at one particular point in his life, was desperate. He was totally desperate in his life. He had lost everything he had. He would lost his friends. He had lost his wealth. His wife had turned, his, turned her back on him. In Job, the seventh chapter, verse five, we're gonna read verses five through seven here. I just want you to see the position he's in. And as Christians, many times we get in these positions. Job, the, fifth, the seventh chapter, verse five, my flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Know what he said? See what he had to say here? He says, I have lost all hope. Oh, remember that my life is a win. Mine eyes shall no more see good. He was discouraged, wasn't he? Job was a great godly man, but he came to a point when he got extremely discouraged. And finally, he came out of it, didn't he? We all have times in our life when we feel lost. We all have times in our life when, when we feel that we've absolutely lost everything we've had. We're just discouraged. But remember, we have that hope, and we have that hope in the Lord Jesus Christ here. So we're going to talk about three kinds of hope. We're going to talk about no hope, false hope, and then we're going to finish it up with talking about true hope. You know, those, there are those today that absolutely are without hope. And there's others that have a false hope. So I guess the question that we have to really ask ourselves, is there a true hope that we can depend on? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. In Titus, the second chapter, verse 13, he says, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to be looking for that appearing, that glorious appearing, he says, of that great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, although faith and hope, they're closely linked together, they're still clearly distinguished as far as being different here. Faith has work to perform today. Hope cheers faith along the way, and it points us to God. Hope cheers faith along, and it points us to the only hope we have, which is in God. In Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17, he says, So then faith cometh by hearing. The way we receive faith is through hearing God's word, reading God's word, is by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hope comes by experience. We're going to see, we're going to jump over to Romans, the fifth chapter here. And I want us to look at Romans, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to pick it up in verse one. I'm actually after verse four here. But let's look at verse one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have been made just as if we've never sinned. 
and we have this peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith unto his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Notice he says here, we rejoice in this hope of the glory of God. He goes on in verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Now that doesn't sound very good. Job wasn't exactly glorying in his tribulation a moment ago when we just read it. He says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Don't ever pray for patience because that just means you're going to have some trouble. But anyway, in verse 4 it says, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Faith accepts the gift of promise. Hope it expects this fulfillment of the promise. So the word of God says much about hope, but never does it use hope in a term where it is an uncertainty or a doubt. You know, a lot of times we use hope as kind of an uncertainty in our, in our conversation. Well, I hope that happens. Don't think it will, but I hope that happens. God's word never uses hope like that. You know, it's, it's wrong to use the spiritual term and say, I hope I'm a Christian. Because we look into the book of 1 John, we know we're a Christian. We know that we're a Christian. It, it, can you imagine saying, I hope I'm an American? No, I know if I'm an American or not, don't I? Or what other country that I might be a citizen of. But I don't hope it. I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm an American. I don't hope for something that I know that I am. I want you to think about that. I don't hope for something that I know that I already am. Let us uh, take and, and look at three classes of words here today in, in respect to this word of hope. There are those who have no hope those who have false hope, and those that have true hope, just like we just talked about. So let's talk about no hope. We're going to be in Ephesians, the second chapter here, just very shortly. But according to, to the Word of God, there are those today who are described as having no hope and without God in the world. While we may think that there are many who have no hope, I don't know if I totally agree with that. I think there's a lot of people, I think most people have some kind of hope. Not saying it's the right hope, by the way. Hope is essential to the human soul. A life without hope, it becomes basically miserable, unbearable, a burden. Almost too grievous to even live. God himself, he recognized this necessity in our life for us to have hope in our human soul. In Genesis, the third chapter, if you remember, God had created everything. He created Adam. He created Eve. And then we see they sinned in Genesis, the third chapter. Adam and Eve had sinned. They were without any hope. They had no hope in their life. And we come down to Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15, and God gives them hope. He promises them salvation. That was the very first promise in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15, that God would send a Savior to us. Our first promise of Jesus. In Ephesians, the second chapter, I told you he was going there in verses 11 and 12, Paul take and discusses those that have no hope. And being in the world here, he says, Wherefore, remember, that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision 
by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So that's, a, it, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Verse 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the, the covenants of promise, having no hope. And without God in the world, having no hope. So ever since man was created, back with Adam, like we just talked about, God has had this hope. The problem is many times people don't necessarily have the right hope or the right God, do they? We have to kind of admit that without hope and without God in the world, we're in trouble. You know, I, I worked with another Christian man many years ago now, and we had a discussion at one point. I don't remember how that particular discussion came around, but it was one of the managers that actually was over both of us. We were doing different things, but he was the same manager over us. And he looked at me and he said, you ever really noticed he has no hope? He's miserable inside. And I said, you know, you're, you're right. He is. I'd never seen a miserable, more miserable man, I don't think. Many years later, probably just, oh, maybe seven, eight years ago, I ran into him again. Still a miserable, miserable soul. You know, what a terrible thing for a person that's young or a person that's old to just have no hope. So we have some that have no hope. Then we have some that have a false hope. I'm looking to look at Matthew, the seventh chapter, and I'm going to pick it up in verse 21. He says, Not every one of you that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Many will say in in, uh, say to me in, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Down in verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these, these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him into a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Notice this person built on a solid rock, and when all the problems came, he was still able to stand. He goes on, he says, And every one of them hears these sayings of mine, and doth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell. And it says, and great was the fall of it. Sadly, you know, there are those that just have false hope. There's a bunch of those that just have false hope. They're wrong. They're not founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're not just those that are in Africa or maybe down in South America in the jungles. Many that live right next door to us, right in our communities, just down the street. They have a false hope. And I'm, I really think that maybe a false hope is worse than a person with no hope at all. A man who finds himself hopeless may finally take and accept a true hope, but one who's got a false hope will never accept the fact that he's wrong. False hopes seems to be so self-sufficient until the rains came and the floods come and they fall apart. So many people, many men, many women are found that their hope is just mere vanity and trouble. And when things come up, it's just like the man that built on the sand. You have that 
That drunk who thinks he can take him, he can quit anytime he wants. He has a false hope, doesn't he? That dope addict that thinks he can take and escape all of his problems just by shooting something up or smoking something. The thief who takes and thinks he can steal and never have consequences. That person that goes to church who thinks that baptism and membership and good deeds takes and saves you. That all of those will save you from hell. It's a false hope. It won't do it. It's not being good, is it? That won't do it. There are also those who take and believe in other religions that don't have Christ. It's a false hope. Do you remember Eli's sons in the Old Testament? Eli was the high priest and his sons basically thought that they really didn't have to live by God's standards because they took and they was kind of in a prominent family. They didn't have to live by the rules. We see that it was a very false hope and they died in that false hope. Many times you find people who have knowledge and they think they know it all and that's the vanity that they have down in their spirit. It's false hope. I know I've talked to a lot of people that claim to be Christians, and they may be, some of them. And I've talked to a lot of sinners who think that, you know, at the end of life, it kind of depends on how the scales balance out, whether you go to heaven or hell. Or maybe you've got a second chance. Again, false hope. The Bible doesn't talk to us about that. And I think the list just keeps going on and on. But I want us to finish up here, and I want us to talk briefly about the true hope. And I'm going back to Titus, the second chapter. And we're going to be in the second chapter, picking up in verse 13 here briefly. And we're going to go through and pull also some out of the third chapter here. But, uh, you know, what is this true hope? Is there only actually one way of salvation? Yeah, that's it. There's only salvation in one person. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible teaches us. In Titus, the second chapter, verse 13, he says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Picking up in verse 14, who gave himself for us that we might re he might redeem us from all inequity and purify unto himself a particular people, zealous unto good works. Notice, we would be excited to do good things. But that doesn't save us. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Then we're going to skip down to the third chapter. And I'm going to skip down into the third chapter in verse 5. And he goes on and he says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace... Notice how that we're saved. Notice how that we're justified, just as if we had never sinned. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We don't have to hope that we get eternal life. We have eternal life as Christians. There's also eternal life, by the way, for those that aren't Christians. But it's not exactly something that we want. Jumping over to the book of Hebrews, I've got several passages here I want to catch just as we kind of wrap it here. But in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 18, it says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled from refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, verse 19 which hope 
we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which endureth into that, uh, that endureth into within the veil. Notice what he says here. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. We, I, I think of, I, I've got a little boat and I've got an anchor and I throw it out and it grabs down into the sand or it grabs the rocks down below and it holds the boat steady right where I want it. And God's our anchor. He's the one that holds our soul steadfast right there where it needs to be. Look over into the book of 1 Peter with me. First chapter. I'm going to pick up verses 3, 4, and 5 here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and it fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Notice, it's ready for us right there in heaven. Then we look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Notice that hope we have in verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith, unto salvation. True hope, it can only be found in Christ. I'm going to go back to a verse in 1 Peter 3.15. He says, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh of you for a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. We need to be ready to always give an answer when somebody takes and asks us about the hope we have in our life, about the direction we have in our life. Can you explain it to them? Can you give that answer? Do you have that hope? I hope and pray that you have that hope. If not, it can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Alan. I'm signing off. You guys have a great weekend. I will see you on Sunday.